Sweet. Um, hey guys, my name is Jerry, uh, co-founder and CEO of Wall Index. Uh, and today, I have five minutes, so this is just agents for data retrieval and analysis. Whether or not you use uh, Wall Index, this is just like kind of like some practical guides that we've discovered while playing around with the OpenAI Function API. Um, and so yeah, this is specifically using the OpenAI Function API. Uh, most of you have already seen this. Um, it's super cool, and, and honestly, it kind of like there's some immersion properties that you can just use to do advanced data analysis and retrieval. Uh, over you know, your, your different data sources. Uh, brief background on Llama Index, it's like a data framework to do like data management and querying on top of your data if you're building an LLM app. I'm gonna skip this part. Uh, let's talk about the OpenAI Function API. So uh, it came out like a few weeks ago. It allows you to spec specify functions in the completion endpoint, right? And so what does this mean? This allows you to basically specify a set of function signatures uh, and then it can actually reason about whether or not it wants to call a function or actually output kind of like a, a user message. And so the implication here beyond just like kind of the fact that the outputs are structured is that you can extract structured data but also kind of more easily build uh, different types of expressive agents over your data. So I'll link these slides in the Slack channel but you know, like to build a basic agent the agent loop gets a lot simpler because you can basically just do a while loop on top of the OpenAI function API that checks if you know like the, the function call is specified. Uh, and so we have like a, a quick guide to show you how to do that. Um, and you know like regardless of what agent you pick, like uh, you could build your own agent, you could use like LangChain. We have like a very simple implementation um, as well. The next step is okay. Now how do you plug in kind of like data tools into this agent loop? so that it can perform like different types of data tasks. And so if you have like a tool that's like, for instance, that does like semantic search and retrieval augmented generation, you have another tool that does like summarization of your data, you can have another tool that does like text to SQL or structured analytics, or another tool that does like document comparisons, right? And if we think about the tool interface, the very simple interface is you just like pass in a string. And so the API interface is just like very simple for the agent to access. And all it has to specify is like a string parameter uh, to the agent for it to kind of like act upon, uh, for it to execute the tool, and then the tool can go and you know like actually do these things over your data. But like beyond kind of like simple API interfaces, um, or, or or the next step I was going to talk about is because this agent loop can kind of like do sequential reasoning out of the box, like by passing in a single call to the API, you can reason about the next step you can actually get some pretty advanced like data analysis capabilities out of the box. And so, uh, for instance, one of these is this idea of like auto retrieval from vector databases. I think in LangChain it's called like self-querying. But basically it's like the idea of inferring retrieval parameters like metadata filters before you actually query a vector database. And so you could construct like kind of your own system to actually call the LLM to infer that, or you could actually just pass it to the function API and then the function API can directly infer these function parameters that you then want to pass in uh, to the vector database. The other is if you have like both a structured analytics tool as well as an unstructured analytics tool, like one is vector databases, one is structured data, they can basically, the agent itself can out of the box reason about complex interactions over your structured and unstructured data. And then last bit, this is like a lot more exploratory, is like the function API can infer structured outputs, right? So not just strings, but also just like very, or like arbitrarily complex didactic objects. If you guys follow one of my friends, like Jason on Twitter, he's been like super active about this. Uh, check out his repo, it's awesome. Um, but basically like you can treat these didactic objects, um, like it's not just like for its own sake for structured data extraction. You can actually treat it as like a query plan or DAG of your data. And then if you actually execute this DAG over you know, a set of like subtools, then you can basically get kind of query planning agents with the function API. Because the function API will infer like a query plan from your Pydantic objects, and then you can execute this query plan over your data. And so it's pretty cool. You know, and then we're still kind of like figuring out the best practices for that. But um, if you guys do try it out, I'd be very interested in seeing kind of what the results are. Sweet. And then the last bit is um, if your set of functions is too large, uh, this is just a very practical tip. You can try like indexing the set of function signatures, doing retrieval on top of the function signatures, and then feeding it into the function API. That's it. Cool. Yeah.